This video almost didn't exist as I went to start editing and my computer locked up and my hard drive that has all my files on it just vanished. Rebooted it a couple times and it reappeared like magic, but it almost didn't happen. But uh, let's just see what I've got for today. Sup? Today I'm going to look at this little Oregon Scientific clock. This is a clock that's, well, it's, it's a atomic clock, first of all. So it sets itself. It has a, an LCD screen with a electroluminescent backlight and it's a projector. And the clock works. It, it had some batteries that corroded in it. it cleaned up the battery terminals with um, some vinegar. And it does work, but uh, we're going to take it apart and uh, take a look inside it. I want to try and clean up the, the projector. So there's a, there's a projector inside here that projects the time on the ceiling. But um, it's got some dirt in there, so it doesn't project that well. I don't know if I can get a shot of it here into the camera. Can we zoom in? You see there's, there's dirt inside this projector which obscures the time displaying on the ceiling. It's kind of cool because you know you got one of these sitting uh, on your night table and it displays the time up on the ceiling. So you wake up at night and you just look up and you can see the time. Well in this case I can't really see the time because some of the some of the did some of the segments are obscured. But anyway, I've never had this one apart. I've had this thing for forever. I forget when I got this but this was the first uh, atomic clock as they called it not really atomic it uh, has a radio receiver in it that picks up the signal from uh, radio station WWVB and you can actually see in the back here there's a little fairy antenna uh, I don't know how this thing comes apart so I guess we'll have to try to pry this thing apart and see whether I can get into it I would imagine that the feet come off it might be glued together but we'll try taking the, the rubber feet off first and see if there's any screws but more than likely there's not. More than likely it's going to have to be pried apart and then glued back together. But that's okay, it's mine. So I kind of like to see what's inside it. And the rubber feet are glued down. Oh, there are some screws. Excellent! Okay. Well, I guess I won't have to pry it apart. There's a couple screws that are right down here. What will reach them? Probably this will not. So let's undo these screws and open this unit up and see what's uh, what makes it so special so there are the two screws it's got some glue around it as well Pry that apart. Okay, I see clips. Okay, so there's clips along the side here that also have to be popped in. There we go. There we go. Cool. So here's the inside workings. I've never been into this before. But there's the inside workings. We have a little, looks like a little ceramic oscillator on the back here. Or a crystal. No, it's not a crystal, it's like a capacitor. I guess this is to make the antenna resonant at 60 kilohertz. We've got a couple crystals down here on the board. There's two of them. Kind of piezo buzzer for the alarm. Get the markings YT0131. Must be the date code. That's the button for the snooze. 
there's two crystals and the antenna is connected over here so the radio receiver is in this part over here this crystal is probably part of the radio receiver and this crystal here is more than likely for the time display here is the um, this is the projector and it does not unplug it's soldered down so I gotta be really careful with this thing I don't know if it'll come apart or not for cleaning but we'll, we'll try it's held in place by a couple screws and there's some tape around the back of it here it looks like that would be the I would think it's or so it's an LED of some type but it's for projection let me just remove the screws on this projector see whether we can lift it out and open it up without damaging it okay so now the projector is loose it should just lift out of here I would think maybe maybe not oh the whole thing comes out this whole this whole lens assembly looks like it lifts down be really careful because this is a ribbon cable and I don't want to put any stress on it because it'll tear and then it'll never work I kind of like it to work if you catch my drift I don't know if I'm going to have any luck taking it apart to clean inside it just from looking at how it's constructed It might be better just to try to blow some air. It looks like there's a vent on the side here. That may be where the uh, where the dust is. Looks like the L this is going to have an LCD panel, right? That's how this is going to work. It's going to be an LCD panel with um, with a light source behind it and then a lens in front of it. And I think the reason why it's so hard to see is because well, there's dust that's all over the LCD panel which is uh, in turn making the or obscuring the digits from shining enough light towards the ceiling so I'm just going to put the screws back in because I don't think that's going to come out at least not like I thought it would and I'll try plan B we'll try to uh, blow some air through it is really fragile looking this this flex cable you thought some of the ones that Sony used on the cameras and stuff was, uh, was fragile this looks ten times worse try to get that screw back in without damaging it. in case you're wondering it's like five hours later when I picked up editing this because the hard drive that was giving me trouble before started disappearing again so I was able to recover all my files and install a new hard drive so hopefully everything's going to work. It was a 500 gig with about 200 and 225, I guess, was in use. So I had to copy all my files over and install it as my D drive again. I'm wondering whether if I take off this bit of tape that's on here, whether this will pop apart. It's, it looks like there's black tape that's just been stuck on here. that hold this back on or does the top pop off it almost looks like the top will pop off of this but if we look on the side here it looks like maybe maybe some dust may have gotten into this this assembly If I shine my flashlight in here, you can probably see, you see the dust inside there? That's where I think it's obscuring the, the uh, there's a lot of dust inside, on, on side the, uh, 
sitting on the LCD display panel. I think that's where the, the problem is, is why it's so dim, is it's just got a layer of dust. If I can disrupt that dust, and I, I was just shining the light through this, this hole on the side here. And if I look down there with my eye, I can see it all, right, sitting on the LCD screen, which is right there. I'm just going to unwrap this looks like black tape that they've just stuck on the back here. You can see all the dirt that's collected in it over the years. is for the the LED backlight for it oh it's just an LED it's nothing fancy it's just a regular old LED that's in there. And this you know, it looks like it will just open right up. probably got the tape on there so that you don't see a red light coming back the back side of it. It's more than likely why it's taped up. I'll bring the air station over here. I'm just going to hold stuff in place so that the pressure won't blow things around. Take a look and see whether that uh, is any cleaner than it was before. I don't think it's so much the dirt obscuring that the panel itself, if I press down on it, 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 some of the segments aren't lighting up as well as they should, and if I just push down on the top here, they light up. I think it's more of a problem with the way that the uh, connection is made to the panel itself. I guess I can try to take the board out and see if I can lift the display out if I remove the screws from the board. See if I can get into that display to actually uh, see if I can fix the connection. It appears to be where the where the ribbon connector connects to the LCD panel. It might go through one of those compression fittings to the edge of the panel. Is that if I wiggle it here, the the segments that are cutting out come back on. So if I can lift the board out, I don't know whether I've got all the screws out or not. If I can lift out the clock. And I might be able to lift the entire. I'm just going to take out the battery compartment too. I might be able to lift the part, the the projection display, and see if I can open it up. I just don't want to damage the um, the ribbon cable here. So I think if I lift out the main board. I can. Is there any more screws? Well, don't tell me there's a screw underneath there. No, it doesn't look like it. If I can lift this all out as one unit, that would be great. assembly out and I've still got it under power now if I pop out these I can pop this top lens off I might be able to open this unit up as I think this whole piece is all um, held together with this lens, it won't, it won't separate without taking this off. Okay, now I might be able to open this up.
There's the LED and the, the light. And here's the LCD panel. The actual time is actually microscopic. I can see it right down at the very, very bottom. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but it's, it's not the whole display. It's just a very small portion of the display actually has the time. I don't think it shows up or not, but it's, 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 it's just right in this area here that shows the display. The rest of it is black. I think part of the problem is where it connects to the main board right here. It's just held on place by tape. Believe it or not, they've just taped it down. It's got uh, just it looks like scotch tape that's holding this in place. I don't think there's actually any physical bond other than the fact that it's taped down to it. Because if I move my fingers across here, the display actually changes some of the digits. It's not lighting up. Some of the segments that don't light up are lighting up when I apply pressure to it. Another thing that's cool about this one is it's got a nice, cool electroluminescent display. It only comes on when you push the snooze button, though. It doesn't stay on all the time. There's a little transformer here to generate the high voltage for the electroluminescent panel. And it may be possible to, to wire this so that it stays on all the time, but of course the problem with that is that uh, the high voltage generated for the electroluminescent panel is going to interfere with the radio receiver down here that picks up the time signal. So um, that's why it's not on, because it will generate interference that will be picked up by the antenna and block reception. If I didn't care that it received the time signal, I guess I could wire it so that the display was lit up. Although it's going to draw power from the batteries, I'd have to wire it up so that it was powered up. The AC adapter right now only does the power for the, uh, the actual projection screen. It looks like the, the panel itself, it looks like the, the LCD panel itself is going bad. Well, it is because, I mean, some of the segments are missing, but it also looks like little bubbles on the display. I thought it was dirt and dust, but I think it's actually the display panel itself is, is going bad. There was dust in there for sure, and I got the dust out, but uh, the, actual, the actual digits themselves are not being formed correctly. You can still read the time, it's just that some of them are fainter than others, which could be the panel itself. It's just that when I, when I rub here on the, on the, on the uh, connector where it's connected together, it does change. I'm going to stick some more tape on here to hold this down because you can see the tape is starting to peel off at the back. So I'm going to stick some tape on there, stick that down a little better, and then try putting this thing back together. Now to see if we can get this thing to go back together. I guess with this the projection display not working properly, it'll just I'll turn it off and just use it as a battery powered alarm clock that is uh, radio controlled. That's the strength of this unit is that it synchronizes itself every night and it's exact to the second. The same with my watch. This one here is also radio controlled as well, right? It picks up the time signal from radio station WWVB. I've got a few of these 
clocks. I've got a I've got a um, analog wall clock as well, and another digital one. Uh, actually, two more. I've got a, I've got a big LCD uh, digital clock, like a wall clock, and I've got uh, another small alarm clock like this, and I've got an analog display synchronized clock. And last year these were almost completely made obsolete because uh, uh, a little over, I guess a couple of years ago now, uh, good old Donald was going to um, shut down the radio station WWVB, which is what all these little clocks synchronized to. Not just these ones, there's all kinds of commercial operations that um, the clock synchronize. I have another one in the house. Um, actually, I've got another one. I forgot about that, that, that little RCA. I've got a little RCA um, clock that's got a, um, an LCD screen that can display like an analog uh, clock as well as um, it'll display digital. And it also has a uh, radio receiver, and I didn't realize that. You know, I I, I I don't know where I got this thing. I think my wife found it at a garage sale or something. But uh, anyway, um, the batteries had gone corroded, and of course, if it's just running on power, you can you can set it. But if you put batteries in it and let it sit overnight, it set you set the time zone, and you, you put batteries in it and let it sit overnight, and it, it picks up the time, which I thought was kind of kind of neat. So that was one I didn't even know had that feature but it does snap this back together and uh, put these two screws in it we'll call this one done anyway how these operate is every uh, I think four times a day they try to synchronize typically the signal is only going to come in at night because uh, the way that uh, the long waves which is this is long wave at 60 kilohertz is the transmitting frequency but those signals generally only come in at least where I am at night when it's dark so what will happen is usually it starts at 12 midnight it starts looking for a time signal and it'll do it like 12 o'clock 1 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock 4 o'clock in the morning or when you force it so how you force it on this I think it was this button you push and hold one of these buttons. Or is it this one? Oh, that's for setting the time manually. It must be so you can set the time manually on this too. If I push and hold, I can set the time. And then I go. Maybe 336, 3. Well, it's almost. <laughs> Could have waited till 3:37 there, but there we go. And then the year 1995, and then the month. That today is uh, eight. This is the language, English, French, Spanish, and I'll say Monday. And then if you tap this key, it'll switch between the day of the week here, and so it displays the time, day of the week, month, day, and this is your time zone, Pacific, Mountain, Central, Eastern. And if I tap the mode, then I can display seconds, which is usually what mode I leave it in because What's the point in having a clock that sets itself if you don't display the seconds? Uh, you can set an alarm time on it as well. There, that's alarm on and off. Okay, press that. Press and hold this one. Yeah, that's the time. So now you can set your alarm time, right? Same way. So I set it to 3.39. I won't make it in time.
There we go. Okay, now it should go to 339. There we go. And it'll start beeping. That turns it off. There we go. That's how you turn it on and off. Alarm on, alarm off. If I tap that, it'll give me the time it's set for, right? Or the day. That's what that is. So calendar or time the alarm is set for. That turns the alarm on and off. That's how that works. One of these buttons you can press and it will start the synchronizing. This will start to flash. I just forget which one it is. Is it that one? That turns it off. There, that's the button you push. That sets the the time synchronize. So now it's looking for a signal, and it's not going to find a signal because the signal is not strong enough yet. But when it's a, when there is a full signal, this will display like five bars for the antenna as it's blinking away and if it's got if it synchronizes this will stop flashing it'll stay solid and it'll show the full the full bars and as long as that is lit up then you know that it has synchronized in the last 24 hours and the time is absolutely correct if it doesn't synchronize then it shows a small bar and it has a little indicator on there that indicates that it was not successful the last time that it tried to synchronize but uh, as it sits right now, whether it's plugged into power or not for the uh, for this screen, it will automatically uh, synchronize on its own. Now, as you can see, it just finished trying to do its synchronized cycle, and as you can see here, it didn't complete, so there's no antenna on here to show that it didn't do it, and it'll try again, unless you turn it off. You can hold the button down here and turn it off, uh, but it'll try again at midnight. It will try. As far as the time display here goes, well, the segments are all lighting up, actually, when I look at it. I can read the time on here, 325. Um, but the, the problem is um, the display itself is, like, it looks like you're looking through bubbles. It looks like dirt, but it's not dirt. It's actually, the display itself is kind of bad it's, it's the LCD that's gone bad it looks like little microscopic bubbles in the liquid crystal which is obscuring the numbers or making them hard to read and the light from the light emitting diode is probably also failing because this thing's been running you know constantly since I got this thing and I've had this thing probably I've had this thing probably since the 1990s late 1990s it's, it's, it's old it's not like this it's not like this is new this is very very old um, the calendar on this shows 95 and I think I got this thing right around the time that it first came out so it's it's probably you know 25 years old at least I bought this on online I saw an ad for it I bought it I don't remember how much it cost but it wasn't exactly cheap when I got it at the time for what it was it was, it was probably 50 or 60 dollars when I got this one but anyway it, it still works it's just the the display the projection part is not as as uh, good as it was so I'll just use it as a non projection alarm clock and uh, we'll call it a day anyway that's a little look at this Oregon scientific radio controlled alarm clock with projection display and the projection display to say is not what it used to be. I don't know if I can get a shot of of the the crap that's on the on the on the panel. I'm, maybe if I bring this in close, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. There, you see. That's what I'm talking about. The panel itself is um, it looks like it's pitted, but it's not dirt because we took it all apart and it's not dirt. It, I thought maybe it was just dust and dirt, but it's actually. It's actually the panel itself. I don't think the camera will focus any better than this, but there you can see what I'm talking about. That mess on there. You see those little spots showing up in the time when it's projected. 
I thought it was just dust, but it's actually the panel itself, the display panel itself has uh, got a problem. You can see the time on there, it's, you can read the time, but it's when you're looking at it on the ceiling, it's got all kinds of little white or little red dots around it. It makes it harder to read and it obscures the time. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Well, today my computer decided it was going to shit the bed, as they say, and my hard drive disappeared. My D drive, which holds all of my Adobe files, just vanished. And then it came back, and then it vanished again. So I've been in a mad scramble here to try and back everything up from one drive to another. So that's my tower, and uh, the two hard drives you see down here, these are two terabyte drives, which store my rendered video on. I don't store it, like all my program stuff, I've got a little SSD down at the bottom, they're all covered in dust, that's the, the OS. But my programs drive, which is my D drive, which is where everything's installed, that one just kind of vanished, so I pulled it out of the computer and I put it into a docking station, and uh, the docking station, it appears to be readable. I'm going to clean all this dust out before I put it back together. Uh, this computer has not been apart in 10 years, and it shows. It's all covered in dust, because that's what happens with computers when they're sitting on the floor, as they tend to draw dust into them. So that'll be all blown out before I put it back together. But uh, anyway, this is my little editing machine. As I say, it's 10 years old, and uh, it has not let me down until today. Here's the hard drive here that uh, has d went flaky on me. For all, just without any warning, it just decided it wasn't going to... Uh, even show up in Windows. And then I say it came back and then it just disappeared again so I was able to get it out of the computer and get the computer booted up and files appear to all be there in this external drive so I'm just in the process of copying it in this uh, USB reader over to uh, another drive and then I'll, I'll rename the drive the same and set the drive to drive D and hopefully things will work. And here's the new replacement. It's been going now for about an hour and it's telling me that there's still an hour to go. I like the drive had that many files on it, 222,000 files. All my music and some photos and some video clips on there, but most of this is just the programs that uh, run my apps, which is basically uh, Adobe CS6 and Audacity and a few others, but there's not a, I don't have a lot on this machine because it's pretty much exclusively used for production work. So 220 gigs is really all I've got as far as apps go. And I'm down to the last 19 gigs, so fingers crossed when this finishes, this machine I can put that drive in, put the, put the backup drive in, and fingers crossed it's going to boot and I'm going to see all the files and everything's going to work. But as I say fingers crossed because usually that's not the case. Usually something's not going to work. It's going to have to be reconfigured and I'm going to be down for even more time. I've already spent enough time on this today. Uh, just to get to this process, it's been about uh, three hours copying these files so far. Thanks for watching.